Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, sir. Good morning to every one of us. Good morning, the Lord bless us. Amen. The Lord prosper us. Amen. The Lord grant us the desire of our hearts. Thank you, Jesus, for waking us up this morning. Amen. Thank you for that which you have done. Amen. And thank you for what you will yet do. Amen. To you be all the glory. Amen. To you be all the adoration. Amen. Blessed be your name forever. Blessed be your name forever. Amen. Thank you, faithful Father. Amen. Thank you, I am that I am. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. We bless your holy name. We glorify you. We exalt you. We bless your holy name. Let's go ahead and give thanks to him. Let's appreciate him. Let's glorify him. Go ahead and glorify him. Go ahead and glorify him. Go ahead and adore him. Go ahead and adore him. We bless you, Lord. We bless you, Lord. You are God forever. You are God forever. Le ko preluz de de bagaya kata lo preluz ada. Elu garato bletsu to preluz apa yege doze preluz ada. Le ko preluz aba lege ya kata lege rozida ba. Me ko preluz ada lege zokoto soto belu gaya ketu la ba bosh. Elu bagaya ge do preluz ada baba ya ge do preluz ada. Meko parezo do brelu sakata rege de geye gelo ma koroso to ba 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 ba. We bless your holy name, O Lord. Thank you, faithful Father. Thank you, I am that I am. Blessed be your name forever. Let the keruz de gedo le krudu zaba le geru zada. Eye keto loba. Go ahead and give him thanks this morning. Appreciate him one more time. Bless him, O Lord. Bless you, O Lord. We bless you, O Lord. We adore you, Lord. We magnify you. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have given him thanks. In Jesus' precious name, we have given him thanks. Good morning, every one of you. Good morning, Good morning for what the Lord is doing in your life. Amen. I'm excitedly excited for the great thing that God is doing in your life. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. I said praise God. Hallelujah. We want to go before the Lord this morning before we share the word of God. And uh, we want to go before the Lord and pray. The Bible says... In the book of in the book of Job, chapter number forty-two and verse ten, it say, "And the Lord turned the captivity of Job. The Lord turned the captivity of Job. I, I'm sure you are getting me clearer. Please let me know. I want to make sure you don't miss any part of today's service." You can just comment there to say that I will, you are hearing me clearly. Now I say, and the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friend. When he prayed for his friends. Also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. I want us to pray this morning. There is one word here that the Lord has just opened me up with. And that is, the Lord turned the captivity of Job when he prayed for his friends. Now we all know what God does with prayer. We all know what God does with prayer. God answer prayer. Now, I want to bring to your attention today that there are certain captivity of our life that will not be torn until certain things happen to our friends. People that could stand for you. 
people that could give you things, people that love you, that they can stand for you, that, that are mindful of your welfare. That is why we are going to draw inspiration here to pray for some group of people in our lives. We've always say a prayer for a leader is a prayer for ourselves. I also want to believe this morning that a prayer for a friend is a prayer for our for ourselves. There are people that are very, very dear to you. They are close to you. Certain things need to happen in their life for your captivity to be torn. There are people that, uh, that hold the answer to some of your prayer. There are people that God could use to deliver the answer to some prayer you have made. So this morning, we'll be praying for your friends. And I'll be praying for my friends in ministry, my friends outside there. We'll be praying for them. The Lord Number one prayer will be, Lord, anyone that needs to succeed for me to succeed or for my captivity to be torn, Father, help them to succeed earlier. Help them to succeed what? Earlier. Let's go before God now and begin to pray for our family member, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. I stand this morning, everyone that need to succeed for my captivity to be torn, the member of our churches, Lord, I ask you, Lord, let them succeed quickly, O Lord. 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 Quickly, o Lord. Father, I pray for all my friends, people that are connected to me, O Lord, that will play a major role in my destiny, that has a major role to play. Father, Lord, whatever is holding them bound this morning, I stand in the gap and I pray in the name of Jesus. I ask you, Lord, cause them to have a major breakthrough, Lord. I ask you, Lord, let them be free in the name of Jesus Christ. I ask you, Lord, let them be free in the name of Jesus Christ. Leku pralo zigayate leke roso toblege ero pabege yake tole moro zidaba Elu karate zelege yato le koroso to baba bage yake to begura to le ba ake to preluza da ge yake to le to preluza da beke yake to zidabo se to preluta pa re ko pa le geroso to baba 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 ma ko preluza da ye ko to li garanto li dalaba Father Lord let their lifting come as fast as possible Lord. Cause them to succeed. Cause them to excel. In the name of Jesus Christ, everyone that matter to my destiny, I set them free from their captivity. I command major breakthrough for them. Open your mouth and pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, everyone that you have connected my destiny with, O Lord, their success is my success. I ask you, O Lord, let them succeed, O Lord. Let them succeed, O Lord. Let them succeed, O Lord. Major breakthrough for them, O Lord. Major breakthrough for them, O Lord. Major breakthrough for them, O Lord. Magoro sokoto, bege yaketo, elugi diagedo, erosoto bababa, makatari libabo zegeato lo breluzada, reko pala pralo. Father, I stand to pray for ministry friends, O Lord. Who will be compassionate on me, O Lord? Who hold part of my breakthrough, Lord? Father, Lord, let them break through, Lord. 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 Friends in ministry, friends within the family circle, friends in the society, friends in corporate world, O Lord. Everyone, everyone, oh Lord, that need to succeed, that my success is connected to. Father, Lord, let it happen. Let it happen. Let it happen, oh Lord. Let it happen, oh Lord. Bre supre lutabaya, dele grotu laba, meto pre lo sopre do. In the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' precious name, I ha we have prayed. I prayed in the name of Jesus. 
for everyone that your destiny is connected to. Their captivity is likely to be part of your captivity. I command their liberty. I Amen. command their freedom. Amen. Children that need to get job so that your hardship in life stop as a parent. I decree that they break through on time Amen. in Jesus' precious Amen. name. I decree that their breakthrough come in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. There are people that if they are lifted, you will own a car. There are people, if they are lifted, your, pressure, your blood pressure will come down as a parent. I decree their breakthrough in the name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Anyone that needs to succeed for you to be a success, I decree that they succeed very early. Amen. Very early. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. When God, I believe, answers some of the prayer Job prayed for his friend, his own captivity was also torn. May your captivity be torn. May your captivity be torn. May anything that limits you, may they be torn. May people that will help you, people that will be merciful on you, may they succeed early. May they succeed early. People that will give you a car, they have to have another one before they give you. People that love you, Lord, may they have means to express their love. May they have means to express their love. In the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' precious name, we have prayed. God help man, but he will always sought for a man to use. I pray that God will raise people that he will use mightily for you. And their arising shall be sudden in the name of Jesus Christ. They will get there faster to minister to you. When God lifted Abraham, the blessing of Lord was attached to it. Even though Lord messed it up. But the Bible says, as Abraham was blessed, Lord was blessed. Abraham was blessed. Lord was blessed. The commandment and the vision God gave to Abraham, there was part of Lot that was in inside it. Whosoever hold part of your destiny, may they succeed very fast. May they succeed very fast. Parent, I pray that your children, may they succeed very fast. May they succeed very fast so that you can enjoy the scripture that said, he will satisfy your old age with good things. He will satisfy your old age with good things. Your old age as a parent will not be loaded with high blood pressure, Amen. sugar issue. Amen. It shall be good news from your children Amen. and your grandchildren. Amen. So shall it be Amen. in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Please, everyone, learn this secret to pray for the people around you because their success goes a long way. They love you, but they need means to express their love. They need their liberty to express their love for towards you. Praise God. I said praise God. Well, let's quickly uh, look into what God has for us today. We are still on the subject of living above offenses. Living above offenses. And we saw in our last teaching what happened to John the Baptist. Our last point is that one of the things that will trigger offenses around our life or we ourselves being offended in others is that when God's, uh, when God's hand begin to rest upon our life or when people begin to manifest the glory of God that is, in, that is, that is upon their life. Praise God. John the Baptist was at peace all along. But when he heard what Jesus was doing, he sent his disciple to go and ask him, Is he the Messiah? Or they should look for another one. For those of you who have been following this teaching, remember it was the same John the Baptist in Matthew chapter 3 who announced to us, and said, Behold, the Lamb of God. The Lamb of God. It was John the Baptist. And he said, His shoe, he is not even worthy to lose the latches. In other words, John the Baptist agreed that Jesus and his ministry is going to be greater than his ministry. But the same John, when he had in John chapter, uh, Luke chapter 17, verse 1, 
you will hear it there and then you read Luke chapter 7 and verse 23. He was offended when he began to hear the miracle that Jesus was performing. Because the disciple of, his disciple went and told him that this is what Jesus is doing or was doing. And uh, he was not happy about it. And then he became offended. He became offended. And you see, Jesus made it clear in verse 23 of Luke that blessed is he that is not offended in him. Blessed is he that is not offended in him. In other words, opposite of blessing is the portion of a person who is offended in Christ. That is, as you are in this kingdom, you are you will be unblessed. Like I want to put it that way so that you can understand. If blessed is the one that is not offended, then automatically curse or lack of blessing is the portion of everyone that allow himself to be offended for whatever reasons. For whatever reason. The moment offense is in you, you are doomed in this kingdom. The moment you are offending others, you are doomed. You are behind the offenses of others. He say, woe unto him through which offenses will come. Praise God. I said, praise God. So we need to understand this very, very well. We need to understand this very, very well. We need to understand this very well. Praise the Lord. Very important. Very important. Hallelujah. Now, I want to give you a, uh, 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 an antidote to offenses. One of the antidotes to offenses. One of the things that will stop offenses and stop you getting offend, offended. One of the things that will make you not to offend others as well. Praise God. Hallelujah. Remember, I said, people can pick offense on your life by virtue of what God is doing. But make sure you do not return offense. You do not reciprocate. And the reason that will make you not to reciprocate Number one, we said, you have to fill your heart with the word of God or with the spirit of God. Remember Psalm 119, verse 165. It says, great peace have they which love the Lord, and nothing shall offend them. Nothing shall offend them. You bring offenses, they will not be offended. Why? Because there is adequate knowledge in them. To be able to depict the source of your offense. For example, if somebody is li enjoying lifting in his place of work, another colleague are getting angry, you don't have to fight them back. You don't have to fight them back because you cannot stop God from blessing you. And already you know why they are offended. We saw this in the life of Joseph. Joseph was never offended in his brother. And you know why Joseph was never offended in his brother? He knew that the Lord was with him. So he cannot stop God from being with him. And he equally know that he equally know that it is not possible for them to stop God from taking him to where he belongs. So you don't have to reciprocate. You don't have to attack people who are attacking you. Because it is the doing of the law. One, they cannot stop God from doing what he wants to do. He said, the Lord has proposed who shall this and all. If God wants to lift you, he will lift you. Number two, you already know that when God lifts a man, he also defends him. That's why he said, vengeance belongs to God. So you don't waste your time and get yourself into the same the same position in which they are by reciprocating or by returning their offenses back to them. You just mind your business. Praise God. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? One, you can't stop the hand of God from what they have decided to do in your life. Number two, they either cannot stop the hand of God. And number three, God always defend his work. And you are at that at this moment you are the project in, the, in God's hand whom he has just decided to bless. You discover how he protected Joseph from all his enemies. So you don't waste your airtime of life to address them back 
or get offended in them because God will continue to do what he has proposed to do. He will defend you. They cannot stop him. So why, is, why allowing the side show? Praise God. I hope someone is getting what I'm saying here. Praise the Lord. So you don't get offended. That, and that to happen, you have to have the word of God in your heart. Psalm 119 verse 165. So at the end of the day, you have your great peace. You have what? Your great peace. You remember what he said to the children of Israel. He said, stand still and see the salvation of your God. You leave them to me. I will finish them. The battle is not yours. Praise God. Now, I want to give you the second, within the few minutes I have, what will help you not to be offended and not to be a transmitter of offenses. And that is focus on your vision. Focus on your purpose. Focus on your purpose. I like to say an understanding of your vision and focusing in the pursuit of the same will deliver you from many temptations of either be an offense to someone or being offended in journey of life. Focus on your vision. It begins by you knowing your purpose here on earth. Know your purpose here on earth. Now in Proverbs chapter, I think Proverbs chapter 18, there is one scripture I love reading there because it is very, very dynamic. Every time I read it, I get blessed. Now, Proverbs chapter 29 and verse 18. It says, where there is no vision, the people perish. You will be lured to anything that can destroy you when you have no vision, such as offenses. You'll be lured to it. When you don't have a vision, it is a trap on your life to be lured to anything that can destroy you. He said, where there is no vision, the people perish. He said, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Now listen to Amplify Bible. He said, where there is no vision, that is, no redemptive revelation of God. No redemptive revelation of God. He said the people perish. When you don't know your redemptive revelation, when you have no redemptive revelation of God concerning you, you can easily be trapped by anything that will lead to destruction. And you know who orchestrates our destruction? is the devil. Remember, offenses is one of the military base. Of the devil, which is set up in the heart of men. Which he set up in the heart of men. Praise God. I said, Praise God. Is somebody still hearing me there? Yeah. So, if you don't have vision, you can be trapped by offenses. I love what uh, one translation ha says about offenses, uh, about uh, vision. And I will try, I think it's uh, living, the Living Bible. It says something very, uh, very powerful. It said, it, uh, that one said, where there is no vision, I don't have it on my system right now. It said, where there is no vision, the people are not constrained. We will go wide. We will allow everything to appeal to us. We will allow everything to get our attention. Now, in a message Bible, he said, if people cannot see what God is doing, they stumble all over themselves. They stumble all over themselves. If you can't see what God has cut you out or what God wants to do with your life, you don't have a redemptive revelation of God about your life, the Bible tells us that we will all stumble over ourselves. 
over. We will fall on each other. We will break our rank. We will cross, we will, we will crisscross the tracks of life. Praise God. Because we have no redemptive revelation of ourselves. Knowing your vision, pursuing your vision will help you to be free from offenses, from the trap of offenses. Praise God. I said, praise God. It will help you. It will help you. You won't be everywhere and you won't be mindful of everything that everybody is doing. You will be less concerned. Hallelujah. You will be less what? Concerned. Now, listen to me. Look at these two class of people on the football field. The spectator and the player. They are in the same feed, but they behave differently. I want you to picture that in your mind. On the football pitch, in a stadium, for example, the spectators are there, the players are there. You can see one spectator moving from his stand or his seat and go to the other edge of the stadium because he's looking for another friend. But a player will remain on his wing till the match ended. But they are in the same stadium, but they are behaving differently. The, play, the, 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 the supporter can dance and, back his, and turn his back to the football pitch and wave to somebody, but the player wave to no one. He's waiting for signal from fellow player. They are in the same football field, but what catch their attention differs. Praise God. The purpose of the, of, the, of the fan is to enjoy the match, to hail this player. But the purpose of the player is to play the football. He's to score a goal. He's to be part of the movement that leads to a score. So they behave differently. They dress differently. They use different way to the stadium. Now, that is how purpose is. When you find your purpose, you will not be everywhere and you will not be concerned with what everybody is doing. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. Now, how does this resonate with what we are teaching? I will quickly uh, show you between within the time we have what happened to John the Baptist. John the Baptist was a man that was called by God to prepare the way for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He was a voice in wilderness. But after a while, John the Baptist moved out of his purpose and went, uh, for the sake of our time, I'll just give you the scripture to read, and went in Matthew chapter 4. The Bible talks about how John the Baptist went and talked in the palace. He talked to the family of the reigning king, Herod. Philip, his brother, has married a woman. And John the Baptist went to rebuke the king and some of his evil acts as well. And then the king arrested John the Baptist and put him in prison. Now, when John was put in prison, he kept on hearing what Jesus was doing on the outside. And that was when he said that they should go and ask Jesus, is he the Messiah that is to come? Or they should look for another one. The anointed, in most cases, I tell, I tell, I tell fellow preacher. The anointed must be careful with the corridor of power. The moment your anointing is ever going to state house, ever going to governor's office, ever going to where there is one party and the other, you are getting out of the purpose. You are getting out of the purpose. And that may make you to create offense where God has not sent you. Or that may trap you and you become offended. John the Baptist was a voice that was to cry in the wilderness, not in the palace. But he went and cried in the palace. 
And we know the rest of the story. Lion couldn't kill John in the wilderness. But when he went to the king's palace, he was arrested by human beings. And then eventually he was beheaded. A man that never died by lion, he ended up dying at the cry, he ended up losing his head at the demand of a house help, I mean, of a little girl. A man that lion could not kill when he was on purpose, he had his head being delivered to a small girl at her request. You see that? But where does the journey begin? He deviated from his purpose. You will not deviate from your purpose. Amen. You will not deviate from your purpose. Amen. Your purpose carry your protection. Your purpose carry your peace. Your purpose carry your stability. You get offended when you are out of purpose. You cannot offend a fish. It's very difficult to offend a fish inside the water. The bigger the fish, the deeper you go in the sea. Where there is no vision, the people are destroyed. And that is why I'm going to uh, mention to you, for you to see just uh, in a short while, how Jesus managed his own life. It was different from John the Baptist. It was very different from John the Baptist. I, I, I want to show you, Jesus never allowed anything to take him out of purpose. So it was very, it was very difficult for people to offend him or for him to offend people because his target was to please his father. And he kept on pleasing his father. You remember many times they would invite him to a feast, love feast. Today when you invite a man of God to love feast, he will be the first one to arrive. But when Jesus is invited to a feast, he will tell you, go, my time has not come. I didn't come for that. This is not what I came for. You remember I was invited to be a king. Can you imagine giving a pastor today, except the hand of God, come on us. Can you imagine giving a pastor, uh, you said, uh, a nominated uh, seat in the parliament that you nominate a pastor? Hardly will we see very few pastors will be able to say no. That, because they are even leaving the, we are even leaving pulpit to go and contest for election. So imagine if we are nominated. We will quote all manner of scripture to support our being in the parliament. But Jesus was asked, come and be the king. That is, come and be the president. He ran away. Because he knew that would be a trap to offenses or him being offended. Now, I, I show you something that I saw here in Mark many years ago that has also been guiding me and helping me. And I believe it will help you. Mark chapter 1 and verse 38. I saw this scripture many years ago. Now, Mark chapter 8, verse 35. It said, And in the morning, rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into solitary place and there prayed. Verse 36. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. They followed after him. They, they were not with him when he left to the solitary place and prayed. But I believe they know his movement. So they followed after him. And look at verse 37. And when they had found him, they said to him, All men seek for thee. Wow! All men seek for thee. Can you imagine, I'm in Mombasa, I, I, where, I, where I reside, and then the Nairobi members came to me and found me in Mombasa and told me that the whole Nairobi are looking for me. All men, how many men? All men seek for thee. Hey, 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 what a temptation. That is the whole Nairobi city is waiting for me. But look at Jesus. Look at his answer. Verse 38. And he said unto them, Let us go into the next towns, that I may preach there also. For therefore came I forth. He said, Let us go to the next city, not the city where all men are seeking for him. 
my God, my God. Can you imagine an America, uh, an, uh, an African preacher be told that the whole London is waiting for him? You know, even when no one is waiting for us, we, 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 preacher will go to any ways or we will go to any land to look for visa and go to look for the men. But in case of Jesus, they say, all men seek for thee. And Jesus said, let us go to the next towns that I may preach there also. For therefore came I forth. Therefore came I forth. My question this morning, what have you discovered is your purpose on earth? How much are you mindful of that purpose? Wow, I'm so blessed. Jesus said, let us go to the rest of the villages so I can preach there also. That is why I have come. <laughs> That is why I have come. Let us go to all the other villages. Let us go to the rest of the village. Where you say the whole city is waiting for me, I've preached there. I'm not going to get out of the purpose. Because they were not actually waiting for him to hear the word of God. They were more or less waiting as a result of miracles. Now, if you check John chapter John chapter 10, or John chapter 18, and verse number, uh, verse number 38 or 37, you will see Jesus saying the same thing there. John chapter 18, verse 37. Pilate therefore said unto him, Are thou a king? Then Jesus answered, Thou seest that I am a king. And then he answered, you are the one who say I'm a king. He said, to this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth, he heareth my voice. I have nothing to do with anyone that is not of the truth. Everyone that is of the truth, he heareth my voice. I reserve my voice. My voice is meant for everyone that love the truth. This will deliver you from many offenses. Many offenses. I have come to realize the more we earnestly pursue our own purpose, the more we escape the trap of offenses. My father in the Lord and my and uh, Bishop David Oyedepo, many a time people will write something about him and publish it in the daily news and the vendor will lift it towards his car. When they see, his, he see him, they will say, Sir, that they will say, tell him to buy dailies. And if he doesn't listen, they will show him the one that the headline is against him. What of this one also? And he will tell them, I'm not buying. And you know what he said? He said, The truth is, if it is him you write about in the newspaper, no news can know himself more than himself. No news. There is nothing you can say about a man more than what the man know about himself. But you know how we get offended sometimes? We get offended by what people say about us. There is no news you can say about me. There is no story of my life that any man knows more than, more than me. So why are you offended? If what they are saying is true, you don't have to be offended. You listen to what they are saying. And then you advise yourself. You use their stone to build the next phase of your life, to correct your life. But you don't get offended. And if it is a lie, why are you offended? Nobody can publish or spread any news about you and the news they publish is more accurate than what you know of yourself. Stop getting agitated. Stop getting angry. As you live here today, may the Lord bless you. Amen. May the Lord prosper you. Amen. May he grant you the desire of your heart Amen. in the name of Jesus Christ. So stay on your assignment. Stop going through Facebook and check what others are doing at the, at the, at, at the, at the expense of your own peace. 
delete, unfriend many people. That's why Facebook never glue you to the page. You can unfriend a friend who is hurting you. You can unfriend them. You can block someone on your phone. It's allowed. Somebody say, Pastor, are you not spreading hatred? No, the Bible says so. It says, avoid them that causes offenses. I close with that verse in Roman. Avoid, avoid. You can avoid people that are offending you by focusing on your own assignment. Somebody will say, this pastor is not preaching love. <laughs> the love, to love someone doesn't mean to be with everyone in, in whatever they are doing. In fact, your love is believed when you give them their space. Let me read that before we go. I know our time is up, but I need to read that for you. Because the day of offenses is over in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, let me hear your amen. amen. The days of offenses are over amen. in your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Look at Romans chapter 16 and verse 17. He said, now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause division and offenses. Contrary to the doctrine which you have learned and avoid them. One of the ways to avoid people on your phone is to block them. You are the one who can call them. They cannot call you. And if they also block you back, there is no harm. So everybody go separate way. Don't go and peruse people and go through all the Facebook pages of people and then you see what they say about you or you see what they are doing or what God is doing in their life is dedicating car. Since you know you can't stand his blessing, can you clear off his part? He's dedicating car, you are getting mad. And he will be driving the car, you will sit inside your madness. <laughs> I command deliverance this morning. I command separation this morning. Amen. I command grace for each and every one of us to focus on our assignment. Amen. I will make sure I finish this teaching by teaching the B part of vision. You will see how Jesus, every attempt to offend him, they could not because he kept on focusing on his assignment. As you go this morning, may the Lord go with you. May this week be a blessed week for you. Amen. Every rain of cl every cloud. That want to bring that want every cloud that want to bring rain of shame over your life is here averted here in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for deliverance for you. Escape every trap of offenses. Live a happy life and a fulfilled destiny in Jesus' precious name. Now you are there, you are not born again. I would like to give you opportunity this morning to give your life to Jesus. This knowledge will deliver you from offenses. Jesus said you shall know the truth. So knowing him is knowing liberty. You are there, you want to give your life, I would like to pray for you. Say after me, Lord Jesus, thank you for today. I am a sinner, but today I come unto you. Jesus, forgive me my sin. I am a sinner, but today I subscribe to the perfect work of Calvary, and I ask you to cleanse me with your precious blood. Forgive me my sin. Write my name in the book of life. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' precious name. For my heart, with my heart, I believe and with my mouth, confession is made. If you have given your life to Christ, look at the address display. Look for me. Try to get in touch with me. I will mentor you. You can also go to the nearby Bible-believing church where you could be counseled and mature and nurtured to maturity. God bless you. I am glad you have confessed Christ today. Today mark a new beginning in your life. The joy of this broker is that you have received Christ. Amen. God bless you. Amen. And for those of us who want to cast our offering right now, please lift up that offering. Worship the Lord without your substance. And I believe God is going to accept your offering. Amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for men and brethren who are online right now, who have made them not to eat in the restaurant of God and disappear. But they read and appreciate with their little tokens of offering. Father Lord, accept their offering. Use it for the advancement of your kingdom. And in return, bless each and every one of them. Make them a financial giant in your kingdom. For whatever a man sow, that will determine what he reap. May the Lord multiply your seed back to you a thousandfold this week. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless you. Have a great time in the presence of the Lord. Be blessed of the Lord. Thank you for watching and we see you 
on Wednesday by the grace of God. It is well with you. All the brethren have a major breakthrough this week Amen. in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 God bless you. See you.